what do you think we are going to see? Well, my flex uh, skill player on my fantasy team, uh, Jerry Judy, and my backup quarterback, Jameis Winston, on my fantasy team. Actually, neither of them are on, are on my fantasy team. I just thought it'd be great. With yeah. utilization of that everybody does care about my fantasy team. Nobody gives a um, shit. But they got a hot hand quarterback right now, and he's coming off a hot hand performance, uh, galvanizing performance. I do believe the Cleveland Browns get off to a really good start in this game. I think they're going to end up being up by two two or more scores in the first half or or kind of knocking on the door of the second half. I, I think the Broncos are going to lose this game 31-21. Wow. Uh, think, you, boy, I, you I, feel I, that poorly about it. My goodness. I, it's, okay. It, it, styles make fights, and, and this one has me extremely nervous. And, and, and I'm not going to I'm not going to be the I told you guy. Uh, I told you side. I told you so guy. Okay. But the CU Kansas game had me really worried. And um, it, it be, that one, because of what I'd seen in the trenches the week before against Utah and what I knew Kansas was, was going to try to do, which is play bully ball on both sides of the football. Uh, I, I worry about the amount of man coverage that both mm. defenses play. And I do think that uh, skill position player wise and quarterback style. I think it favors the Cleveland Browns. And so that's that's my concern level. And you could say, why don't the Broncos just play a ton of zone coverage? I mean, outside of a game or two, I haven't seen them play zone coverage with the kind of – they played zone against Lamar Jackson. I'll say that. Uh, that was the one game they played a heavy dose of zone, and it was ugly. So uh, I, I just think this is a man-to-man team. And if if Jameis Winston's able to find a few explosives early, I'm, 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 uh, I'm, I'm worried about it. Uh, we get uh, – dude, what – Hey man, did you, uh, you want me to be a fan? Do you want me to be a fanboy, or do you want me to analyze uh, the game? I want you, you know? kill it. Kills with truth. I care. Well, about hey, it. I appreciate you, U.S. and John. Yeah, you uh, care dude. about your fantasy team. I guess, I guess I'm wrong, Pro- but I want to be proven wrong, Dmac. That's the point. I want to be proven wrong. I wanted. I almost want to reverse jinx this game. Mm. Uh, I'm kind of going with that because I want this. I, I have put myself out there saying this is a playoff team, and I didn't. I didn't realize how much Cleveland had trended in a positive direction until I watched that game against the Steelers. Okay. I got the Broncos winning 23-13 as I just think Winston is just... I, I think there's going to be moments where he looks really good. Um, I just think the best pass rush in the NFL against the worst... Uh, it's hard to say worst offensive line, but they've given up the most sacks, however you want to put it. So the the team that sacks the most is going to win against the team that gives up the most sacks. Right. And I, I think it'll boil down to more along those lines than anything else, uh, despite pew, 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 possibly the laser show from uh, Bo Nix. However, I do think there's going to be moments in this game where Jerry Judy's going to have a moment or two. And mm-hmm. and and uh, he is going to be plenty motivated to do that. Um, yeah. And it'll be interesting to see what kind of response he gets, but, um, but Hey man, it's fun. It's Monday night. You know, it's weird not having a game, um, you know, until Monday, but then it gets like really exciting. Like, you know, all day, it's kind of like, you're all jazzed up. up. Yeah, man. I think we're talking weather and the clear skies and the you know forties or so, which are, you know, that's like what we're watching right now. That's for sure. Oh, listen, bro. I went to 50 straight of those bills games and yeah, most of them are earlier in the year, um, where the weather's just fine, but (laughs) You would get every year for the five years I lived there, bro. You you would get two, maybe three games like this one. And it's sort of fun, I guess, but uh, I don't miss it. <laughs> I'm really, it's more fun to watch on TV than yeah. be part of it. So there was, uh, there, DMAC, there was an interesting moment at the, the opening of the broadcast for the Bills 49ers game tonight where Syracuse alum and my favorite uh, color or play-by-play guy in the business, Mike Tirico. My guy. Um, he's a, he's amazing. He's truly incredible. He asked Chris Collinsworth, did you, did you ever play in anything like this in your day? And he said, nothing like this. Yeah. He said, but the one game that I do remember was uh, in warmups, it was dang near blizzard like conditions in Denver, which, which I thought about when's the last real like true snow game. Like, like, Gosh, has, man. does it ever happen? Is it because there's just not the lake effect? Well, snow? The, the kind of famous one is, and it was many years ago, was the overtime win against the Patriots, where CJ Anderson ran for two touchdowns, one to the right, one to the left, same play, just reversed. That, that, that wasn't, that wasn't like, I don't know, man. That, that, it, it was snowing, but it wasn't what, what, like was ridiculous. The field covered? 
Yeah, like lightly, like a not like this. I'm looking at this. Right. I mean, I mean, it wasn't like this. It was kind of like a a dusting. Um, I was at in 1998 of all times when I tried okay. out for a job that I didn't get. The Raiders <laughs> and the Broncos when uh, Tim Brown compared to like why would it's um the the big um uh, offensive lineman caught a snowball in the eye and just oh. blocked it I think and he went into the, oh, the Chester R I P that was he, my nah, you name. know what I don't no it was Lincoln Kennedy I'm sorry I'm okay. sorry it wasn't just, yeah it was oh, Lincoln we had, Kennedy we had Lincoln Kennedy on morning sprint last week ahead oh, of well, the other he's the Raiders uh, color analyst now yeah so he went into the stands to fight somebody because he got hit by a snowball he t- he and, brought it up. He brought it up on the airwaves. <laughs> he talked about it. He's like, he goes, I know, I, I had no clue about it because I, I, I have no idea what I was doing in 98. Yeah. I mean, I was, I was moving. I was moving as a high school junior right. from uh, South Bend, Indiana, back to California. So, well, I was at that game trying to land a job, which again, I didn't get at the time. I got it later. But, you know, so I go in the locker room because I'm like, ooh, it'd be my, more interesting in the Raiders locker room. And it was. And then Tim Brown said, I can't believe, uh, Folks that would go through Columbine would throw snowballs. Basically oh. said that. And I confronted Ooh. him. I said, are you really comparing what happened in Columbine to, to snowballs? And he goes, you know, yeah. Like, he didn't back down from it. And Ooh. I was like, and we buried him on the air about it. 20 years later, I'm over on the fan, and he comes back on. And, and they're booking him to be on. I go, well, listen, if he comes on, I'm going to have to ask him about this. So, like I, I said, I'm going to ask him about this if he comes back on. It's 20 years later. And they're like, okay, yeah, no problem. That's fine. And he knows about it. And okay. And I'm like, you sure? Yeah, 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 yeah. Comes back on, defends the comment. Wow. Like doesn't back down for it 20 years later. So it's wow. like, yeah, and then bum, 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 bum. And I, 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 I was like, hey, man, I, I literally said this, Tim, I respect you as a football player. And you know more about that than me. But just as a human being, let me give you some life advice. You need to change your tune on that one, bro. And, yeah. uh, you know, it was kind of a. How, do you, how, do you, how did Tim Brown, Hall of Famer. Uh, Heisman Trophy winner respond to that? Not well, because uh, you don't like to be, you know, told life lessons. But his his experience as a human being isn't more valuable than mine. And right. apparently, actually, his experience as a human being is, I mean, I guess not as sophisticated as mine. If he doesn't understand why comparing getting hit by a snowball to what happened in Columbine is not even worthy of coming out of your mouth. So, uh, so I, I'm not a big Tim Brown fan. Uh, for that very specific reason. But it's funny you would bring up snow games because, I mean, I, in all honesty, and, and somebody in the comments may recall one, but that was back in 98 and the little dusting. So it, it doesn't happen that often. The most famous game, Mike, of course, is just how cold it was in 2012, 2013 for the Broncos and the Ravens and Raheem Moore and the ball over his head and losing in double overtime the year that the Broncos probably should have won the Super Bowl in Peyton Manning's first year back here. But that there was no snow that day. No snow. It was just unbelievably cold. So, you know what the temperature in Buffalo is? Let me ask you how you feel about this, and then we'll wrap it up. It is snowing, but it's lake effect snow, and it's 30 degrees. Yeah. So, yeah, yep. it's wet and snowy, but 30 degrees? I mean, the Broncos-Ravens game was like minus 2, 3, 4, 5 degrees, yeah. something like that. What would you rather play in, man? Would you rather have – like the snow, or would you rather it just be freezing cold and no snow? Oh man, it's so hard. I think traction, like this game, the traction's played such a factor in it. Even some of the run, the runs that were, you know, 50, 60 yard runs that never happen in normal NFL game because the defense is losing traction, can't redirect. Yeah, I mean, I, I think as like a quarterback, I I would say playing in frigid cold temperatures is preferred over this because of the timing of the pass game. Okay. Uh, okay. We all know that uh, a wet ball is not necessarily our quarterback's favorite thing here in Denver. Um, at least from one game, we have a one game sample size on that. But um, yeah, I'd say I would say uh, as a quarterback, I'd probably take frigid temperatures. All right. That being said, uh, I have John- uh, I have a couple little comments here. Um, so if you scroll up, DMac Eric yeah. Reather. Um, Eric Reather. Okay. I'll get him. I'll get him. I got him. Is this it? Yeah. So Eric, I appreciate you listening. Love, love having you watch this program. Um, the analysis was uh, pretty in depth about man coverage and the amount of man coverage that both the Broncos and the Browns do employ. They're both top five in the league in playing man coverage. And you, you 
you, you better cover well with Jameis Winston. He's going to try to extend plays and push the ball down the field. Uh, and then conversely, seeing a ton of tight press man coverage, you know, Bo Nix is going to have to fit some tight throws in, which mm-hmm. I think he's capable of. This will be in a great opportunity to show that he is. Mm-hmm. Um, but but that's that's I talked about that was my analysis. It wasn't just I have a bad feeling. Um I, I do believe this is a bit of one of those kind of reverse jinx games. I I, I hope my feelings wrong because I, I want this team to to make good on my prediction that this is no doubt about it, a playoff team that we have right now in Denver. And if it anything short of that is a failure, that, that's how I feel with the way that this thing stacked up, the Browns losing, the Dolphins losing, losing, uh, the Colts kind of lingering, but who who really are they? This is a team that has to make the playoffs this year, and and different than the preseason prognosticators. But they're everybody changes of midstream, just like CU. They were a CFP control your own destiny type of the team three weeks ago. You want to take this one, Coach? Sounds like Coach is doubting Bo again. I I, I don't think that. I think that Bo Nix has feasted on zone coverage. Uh, he's done it against NFL teams. Uh, anybody wants to point to the fact, you know, four of those games are against the NFC South, which is clearly not a good. It's still NFL players with the same salary cap restrictions, maxed contracts to the point that they can. Um, but yeah, I, I think that you got a different stretch of games coming up um, than than what's lied behind that, than what's bet behind you right now. I, I do believe that, and I, I do think that we're going to find out a lot more. I'm not we know a lot about Bo. He's awesome. He's freaking fantastic. But we're going to find out a lot more about Bo, and obviously you could call it that this is bonus Bo, right? That this is better than well. well I mean, what do you want? Denver, what do you want? Do you want a guy that's not a bust? Is that the standard? Or do you want a, a guy that's going to take a, a dominant defense and a really well-coached football team to, to the glory land, which is to the postseason, which you haven't been to in nine years? That's that that's what I'm, I'm waiting for. I'm watching and I'm excited about.